Hello Saturday evening people and here we have Adams Squire Bronco Bass um, interesting thing with an absolutely almost unfinished neck on it um, but nice feeling budget thing all round and it's not a massively expensive bass I've just had a, um, a look at it uh, little tweak and a little play and um, it's it's quite nice as it's very light very easy to play um, a bit bit weedy this single coil pickup um, which is apparently what a lot of people say about it so with that in mind um, Adam's plan is to upgrade this thing first of all with a, um, a decent bridge secondly with a decent pickup all the way from Wilkinson I think Look at that. Yum, yum, yum. Big chunky thing. And some new strings when all said and done. So, of course, you can take a look at this and you can say, what are we going to do to this? Well, we've got to replace the bridge and we've got to replace the pickup and get it to fit in this thing here, which we've got to get underneath. Now, I believe it's routed underneath for a bigger pickup, which is great. Um, the nut looks not too bad at the moment. Um, and I've got it just put it down to a very low action just to begin with and didn't get too much in the way of buzzing but a little bit so but I don't think it needs to be that low it's a very ultra low action anyway here so um, I guess the thing I haven't really figured out on this is exactly what's going on so we can we can explore it together um, it's one of those things so <laughs> let's, let's move a few things around a bit so you aren't looking at a back end of a lampshade the whole time. Uh huh. So I'll look down at this a bit and sort of there ish, kind of. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I so suppose straight away we want to get under the hood and uh, see what the spacing arrangements are and see what we've got to work with. And obviously, there's all this lovely um, cellophane that we've got to take off. I think we actually get under here. These are going to have to be done by hand. So, yeah, brand new. We're going to take everything off straight away and have a look. Because it's a straightforward job. Yeah, just about able to do that. Bronco base and its affinity model or affinity series very nice clean plain wood neck um, yeah not massively tall frets or anything nothing kind of mind-blowing but we shall see how it plays with some with a new bridge and a new pickup but yeah, it's uh, all I've found out really about this place online is that um, it is considered the two, the two weaknesses are <laughs> considered to be the um, single pickup, single coil pickup, which most people who've commented say that they feel it's a little bit on the gutless side. Um, so we're going to replace it with this humbucker and the two in one. Um, two saddles in one intonation which is always the way um, so Adams schemed to improve both parts of that um, I think the other things the only other sort of budgety things to look at on here are the tuners but they're actually I expect they, they, they'll operate absolutely perfectly um, they shouldn't have any problem holding tune which is their main function One last one uncoiled. So I'm just doing this so I can get them out easy. I don't want to cut them, they're brand new, I might as well keep them in case they're needed for some other purpose. Um, unlikely because I'm not I don't do bases very often, but anyway. Um, but it's uh, better than chucking them away. So what we'll have to look at is removing 
removing the original bridge and looking at how we're going to line up the next one and what, and what the screw fittings are. Because that's going to, I suspect, oh it might be, no it's not quite the same, it's, it's, it's increased the number of screws. Um, but let's have a look when we get to it, I'll cross the bridge when we get to it, which won't be far. So there's our four original strings. Put off to one side. Oh, brilliant. Come on, don't get tangled up. Thank you. Just didn't want to do it. It's not wanting to play. I don't want to tighten it too much. Right, sit over there. So, lovely cellophane that's going to get caught under the pot. Oh yeah, we're going to replace the pots as well. Now, I'm not quite sure what we're going to replace them with yet, although Adam sent me some, but a bit like, like for like, so I don't really know if it's kind of worth doing. Got some screws, got some, a little adjuster hex key with this. This is Goto Bridge, so it's, uh, it's oh, it was made in Japan, there you go. So we have a different, yeah, very different arrangement. So we're going to end up with um, a gap. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do, before I take this off, um, I'm going to put down a bit of tape here so I can get me a measure of where the saddle currently sits on this bridge. Now we can obviously measure that from the 12th fret or from the nut if we also want to, but just as a sort of a guideline to begin with, so I know where we're at, we might as well start out with this marked up. So, my uh, midpoint of the first saddle is there, and my midpoint of the second saddle is about there. They're a little bit staggered, but that's the basic placement of it. Now what I'll now do is take this one off. I just get a, a looky feel of the replacement and just see how it sits on there because we're going to need to fill some holes and I have some paint which I probably touch up the fills with. It won't be the most beautiful thing on earth but um, this thing is you know a functional bridge um, but people prefer to have in individual control over the strings where intonation is concerned hence the, the individual four screw uh, sorry four saddle individual arrangement but we'll see also what I just want to quickly check is have a look at the spread of the strings a fractionally wider I think wider which is okay there was room on this. Um, okay, so there we have our ground wire sitting up, actually pressing into the soft paint as it was. And then we have our position here. Now, the question is what we could do is just go back for a centre point here. Now, we can take it again off the middle of the bridge at any time. Um, the centre mark is always good to have um, since we've got our paper masking tape here we can make a mark on the paper as well so we go down the center of these dots in between these two whoops that's not going to stay there down the middle check this should run through the center of that screw if it's screw hole if it's nicely lined up yeah well let's just check this 
that screw is much more on the centre mark. It's very close. It's very close. Um, the best thing to do anyway is to, and we'll use the strings for this, is to actually put the strings on and then, and then arrange the bridge in such a way that you can position it exactly. Um, but as a, as a marker point, so where are we going to go? Actually, you know what? I just about think this is going to cover the original holes. I think, I think, if I'm not, oh, that's not bad. That's it's a, quite a bit smaller, but we are just about covering the original holes. Very cool. Okay, in which case, I'm going to start by giving me a platform to draw on, and I'm going to use these strings again. I'm just going to use two of them for now to give me a, just the the best chance of getting the positioning right. You can measure it sometimes, but I prefer to physically use the um, use the bridge and then and work it directly off the neck as it's sitting. So we'll go, we'll go with the low E and the high string, which is of course the um, in the world of bass. And then I'll put this on again. And what I'll use when I'm doing this marking up is I'll use a capo, sorry. Just to um, see, mm -hmm. see, I don't need all of this string. That's the first thing. It's too much. It's too long for what we need. Okay. Um, now I have to go back and get my mark. I need my mark. There's my one mark. There's my other mark. I do need those. So let us mark the front of the bridge. Sorry, I'm just let's just line this up approximately on the front and on the back. Okay, that is about right. It's not it's not the be all and end all or the final positioning, but it's a gives me a guide to work with when I'm doing this. So I can see how much of these strings I need to put on. Actually, I don't need all of that. So let's cut some off. So we do a bit less winding because what we're really doing here is just positioning things, not making a playing guitar at this point in time. close to being on target there and I'll just use the capo to hold that down while I load up the G. Goto bridges. Okay, hitting the bridge. Right. Do both of those, put that back under there, put that back on there for a second, in a straight line hopefully. Thank you. Okay, so right now I've got them, I don't know how well you can see this, I've got both of them in place. Um, I want to take the cap off because I need the uh, need the freedom to move around. And now what I'm doing is I'm just pulling or slacking off on both until I can get the bridge to the position I want. Now both of the, well, all of the saddles are a bit too high at the moment but I'm not really concerned too much about that. What I'm looking for here is the 
positioning um, of the bridge itself um, and just really uh, making sure that we've got a good start point to move backwards from with our saddles which we can do and then we want the right good position side to side and then when, I've, when I'm happy with that position in fact what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lower I'm going to lower these saddles more because I want them right down where I can where I'm sure that the strings are um, kind of following the frets really I don't want them miles high so I have to estimate where they actually are along the fingerboard so the idea is just we're getting get the alignment right to begin with holes as I can reach without this thing wandering off position which is actually quite hard to do. And difficult to do the front ones because they're also hidden by the strings. Okay, so there we are, there we are, there we are. I'm happy about the um, happy about the side-to-side -side placement of this. Um, the thing that might just change a little bit is the front and back placement but actually that's pretty good too. Oh, okay so there I'm comfortable with the position for the bridge. Um, and you can see it's marked up on there. So that's the first part of it taken care of. I'll get that out. Throw this on the floor. Yeah, so this is, uh, I've not seen one of these before, these Bronco bases, and it's very thin, um, well, they're relatively thin bodied. I mean, I suppose it's consistent with all of all the Affinity series guitars. It's not a full body, full thickness. It's also very light, which of course is clearly what it's meant to be. So it's um it's a particular beast. But it's very simple and straightforward, which is I think why people like it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo. these things, <laughs> screws. I'm going to have a look and see what's under the pick guard. Because we're going to have to lift that and um, make some adjustments, including uh, cutting the pick guard to fit the humbucker, which is a fair size. Now with, since this has got the um, jack socket in the pit guard, everything except, or everything will come up except the ground wire, bridge wire, bridge earth I should say, bridge ground. Um, and we should be able to pull that out as well if we want to. Oh, here we have it. Yay, humbucker style. That's a mucky old thing. Look at that. Okay, so there's your there's your single coil um, pickup, which is kind of explains why there's not a lot of power coming out of this, as people report. I don't know. I haven't played it. There's a 
a bit of scratch. No, that's a bit of glue or residue of some kind. Okay, so you've got a shielded cavity, and um, we've got an earth. Um, it's grounded to the earth on top of one of the pots. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to replace that little thing with this big beastie here. Um, and this being a humbucker, it's got a coil split pair. Um, now I haven't worked out, I'm not sure I've checked with Adam what that's going to be or what we're going to do with that, but that's okay. So what I'm going to now do is the risky scary bit, since we are going to replace this bridge, I'm now going to make some very small marks on my position so I know where my holes are. Um, very little marks, I can see where they are in relation to the original holes, which is cool. And these are going to be dead center on all of these little marks. We're obviously going to drill those out for pilot holes, but in the meantime, just permanently marking them. Which means I can take off the uh, masking tape at that point. Okay, so there's my everything marked out. By removing this as well, what it means is I can pull out the ground wire without any complaints. So that it comes here, and then we can basically take the whole thing off. Providing I first undo the ground connection, which is there. So there we have it, our single ply, what shall we call it, pick guard, and our empty Bronco base shell. Now, that's one of the things that was interesting. To f we couldn't really find much about. Um, what was on? I think it took me quite a while to find what, a picture showing the inside of one of these to see whether or not that. I mean, I know Adam had researched it, but I wanted to see what space there was in there for this pickup. A couple of things for people who might be interested to notice. Um, the first thing is um, this cavity is yes, it's grounded, um, not all the way up, just up the sides a bit, or most of the way up, but not not massively precisely done, but. I guess it probably doesn't matter that much. Um, you can also see the bit where they make the grounding double over to touch the foil that they've used to ground off or back off the uh, pots, you see. So the idea is that comes together, or that little bit of continuous paint touches the foil and makes a continuous circle, circle, circuit, you know what I mean? Electrical continuity. Okay, so I'm just gonna, for my own benefit, I'm just going to put this the right way up and line up on these tiny little marks. There we go, the position of our bridge. And it's going to be nicely on target because we've already just done it, but to be absolutely dead sure, I'll place it down there. Yeah, lovely. Good long straight edge is always handy to have. Okay, so. That's that. Um, I'm going to hang this out of the way because we don't need this. But you can see how simple this is. It's a couple of slabs of wood and good old fendery design there. Um, one of the things I'm looking at here is this is a what looks like a tusk nut. I don't think yeah, it's not plastic. So that I wouldn't. I'm not going to mess with that unless there's a reason to. Um, I've got bone nuts that I can replace should we need to, but I don't think there'll be any express need to do that. Okay, so next thing to do is um, I'm going to pause in a minute. I'm going to go in and get something to eat. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to check with Adam about what we want for the functionality. Do we want? Does he want a coil split on this humbucker? Um, and I'm also going to have a little plan plan mentally for how I'm going to um, replace this or how I'm going to cut this out. I mean cutting out is a matter of drilling and um, hmm, drilling and drilling and filing. It's going to be quite difficult, relatively difficult to do but we can dremel a fair bit and we've got to we've got to work it out so that we have hmm, 
Okay, so the, so the footprint, we're going to have to make a, a template out of this, but the footprint of this is going to cover up uh, pretty much everything that's here, um, including the screw holes. So we're going to need to work off uh, that, um, but we need to get a template of this drawn up and then work off that too. <laughs> Missed to position it um, and just looking at it yeah we it will it'll we'll end up with these three new holes in the thing scratch plate to allow this movement so what I'll do is I will get me a piece of thingy transparency and I'll make a, a copy or make a, a yeah a copy of this and then overlay it onto that and see where it's going to go um, Obviously, we've got anywhere from, well, we haven't got all the way up there, but we've, we've got a little range in here to put it. Um, and so the question is whether we go a little closer to the bridge or keep it kind of where, uh, maybe go dead center on this, this original one um, to keep it as close to the original as possible. So let me just find a bit of paper. Come on. Oh, I need a bit of see through. So, so I, mm, I've got a bit of a, I have a bit of a, I don't have very sharp marker pens at the moment. That's one problem. Oh, everything, everything that's sharp isn't waterproof or permanent, so it will really rub off. So let's try. Well, maybe that one is. And maybe it's not working very well. That is permanent, but it's kind of almost dead. Okay, so let's get let's get let's get something um, something flat and light coloured, but for which I haven't got typically. flat enough. So look first of all is it is it chamfered? It is very slightly so it's a tiny bit wider on its bottom side than it is on the top side. So and now the thing about this is we're not quite flat either because the wire's in the way but let's use this as a pretty good guide to start with. We can amend it later. Okay. So there's our footprint put across onto there. Now that's obviously on the outside of the original shape so this is a little bit too wide. Um, but actually it's probably right just to make an, a, a hole wide big enough for this to go comfortably through. So the other aspect of this is that clearly if we now go to stra straighten up these edges. First of all we don't cut there, that's going to just house a screw hole. So we just go across there like that. And same with these two but we want to mark up where the screw hole would need to be because that would be helpful. In fact, we can use that as a, a, a guide for drilling. Looks like they're going to be... Now what I don't have is to hand easily is a pen that will go through all the way through, but what I do have is the um, poking thing, which should go all the way through, and at least will, if I go straight down, will allow me to make a mark. It's a good idea where the oh, that's moved a bit. Stay still, please. Mm. 
Okay, that's done that. And that's done that. And that's done that. Okay. That's not a bad idea of what we're doing. So I need to cut this out because the point about it is to then play, be able to place it over here or I'll make a I'll get I'll make, make sure I get a square. This um this one's actually is this tilted slightly? Hmm. No, I think that's square. It's 90 degrees to the axis of the guitar. So we need to just um, double check this and line it up and it will be about there, which is pretty good. Um, but it will help to cut it out. So somewhere here I've got some new there they are. Some new blades. It's very helpful to start with a new blade. There's some corners to factor in, um, but that it's not too critical. We, we, we need to make sure we do make the corners work when we come to cutting it out. That's going to be the important bit corners in the actual cavity cutout itself. But sorry, the, you know, the, the pickup cutout itself will need those corners rounding. Um, but it's, it's a little bit difficult to physically do them because yeah, it's a handheld blade, frankly. And it's going to want to do what it wants to do. But we use this to draw our template on. Now of course the thing to check at this point is will be does this go through and it just about does. So by the time we've drawn it onto there and cut around it we should be alright. Um, that's not too bad. That's probably a tad too far north of what I want so I'm gonna redo that one, that one and that one. There we go. Mistakes. And then this is actually a, a cover on here, so we can afford to draw on that. So we could. Let's just make sure we get the right way. Yep. Yeah. So the two are going to be on this side. What I can also do, just makes it a little bit annoying, is let us just get this hot temporarily out of the way. This is um, a case where you either, uh, I need to make this smaller again, yeah you can use, I tend to use eyeball at this stage in the game, um, in, in that I like to, I like to gauge things by eye, I find that actually easier to do. hung up in measuring things. So I've got me a, a shape template and I've cut it back so I can stick it down with some masking tape. So now I can line it up and this is where the eyeballing comes in. I'm very sensitive to things being parallel lined up or not. Just ask my dad and stepmom after having oops, after having um, put up a mantelpiece around their fire for them. Okay, so there's my sticking it down. That's 
have a look at this, eyeball it. Um, if I'm not happy with it, I can lift it up and replace it. Let's just try that again without distorting the plastic. That's where it moves right at the last minute. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now, obviously, we don't, it doesn't press down perfectly on flat on the surface, so we are going to need to hold the wrong pen, hold things down to make the marks. Um, and remember, I'm drawing onto. Um, cellophane, protective cellophane now. So, oops, so I can always remove that when the time is right. But I can also leave it on here if I want, want it to be in place while I'm doing the cutting. Go over your finger, that doesn't help. Oh. perfectly cut corners but cutting the corners okay and then while I'm at it I can make a, a mark or three for the adjuster screws okay so I think you'll agree that even in a sort of shorthand version it's quite simply done um, using using the existing or the, the actual things we've got pick up the pickup that we've actually got to work with and so on. Okay. Now one thing it is worth or I can do at this point, and I'm going to remove that. So just to make my life a little bit easier here, I'm going to cut gonna cut this one off. And I say cut because I like to know where things came from and I don't need this pickup again. So I'm going to lose this close to the source and then I can remove it from here. Pretty certain it was, um, but it, I'm, I'm just looking. One edge looks like it's a little bit. I've drawn it a little bit wider than the other, so that may be because. I've, yeah, is that because? Is that because the pickup itself is cut slightly differently? Yeah, that's interesting. I draw this line across here like this. This isn't entirely the equidistant, no, the same thickness all the way down. That's that's what's showing up, but it's okay. You know, pick up holes are never microscopically perfect. So on the basis of that, I'm going to look at this and go. Okay, look at that one and go. So this one. All right, this one is just a slightly bit under on the bottom part. That's what was catching my eye. So I'm just going to balance that out to make sure we fit the pickup nicely. Yeah, I can see the discrepancy now. Um, and I'll just measure my marks. 
to be sure. So we've got this is just this is cross-checking my eyeballing, I guess you could say. 14, 15, 15. That's good. So that's the bottom baseline. Then up to the top we've got basically that's the way of going from the line, so we're going 47.43, just about exactly right. That's eyeballing for you. So the, the original shape that I drew out on there is slightly off. But if we stick to this, um, stick to this, these guidelines here will be in, in a good place. Um, so let's, just, let's just double check our measurements. of this which is slightly thicker than the top we need 48 48 58 to go through comfortably okay so that means we want to go a little further I didn't really want to draw direct straight on top of here, but because this thing is not sitting flat. Um, but hey, just double check this. And through and there and down about. Mm. Okay. So we want a 48, 68 all the way, and that is probably where we need the extra. The bottom part. To the line, up to the line, good. So then in the middle position we're going to go. That one's on the mark, this one's too close. So we're going to go duplicate this positioning because that's right on. 313, which is there. So not right about this one is a 90 degree isn't quite right at this top end so let's get that right as well there you go so I can see that that's slightly off so we'll correct that with a bit of eyeballing which then gives us back the correct distance for the drill hole for the adjuster screw there we go there it is ok 
Okay, that's good. That's a slightly corrected thingy. Looking good. Uh -huh. So I'm going to hold off there for a minute now. Just place everything tidily out of the way. I'll kill the music for a minute. Uh, actually, we might come out and do a little bit more. So, temporary useful um, cellophane. We use loads of it. Always does come in so handy. Yeah, now we're ready to um, make some cuts on that, which probably would be a bit noisy to do it tonight. Although I could drill. Uh, be possible. Right, see you later on when I've either drilled it or... Yeah, so I'm going to go and draw myself up a wiring diagram to, um, to do whatever Adam wants doing. See you in a bit. Okay, so I've cheated a little bit. I've got ahead of the game here, but you'll forgive me. Um, wiring diagram we're going to have a coil split here it is in a push push switch format Di -ding, di -ding. you've got a nice big chinese orange drop that works as well as the original orange drop i promise you and an alpha pot 500k here so that's the wirings well that's the pots i'm going to have the jack in there of course um so this is now going to sit here till tomorrow and i'll come back and um, complete that tomorrow and it should be uh, straightforward. I was going to use this Polish Russian thing which is kind of cool but um, I wasn't it says 0 0.025 um, nano bots or whatever that thing is um, but I don't trust it necessarily. Well it's, it has a little certificate of proofiness but I don't I'm not sure I agree with it. Oh no my phone's in the way sorry. So there's the Bronco sitting there waiting to be done. Um, I think Adam just said, could he have a Morris logo on it, but uh, not very easily, not without redoing the finish on the top, and it's all completely, you know, satin and everything already, so I'm not sure that's an easy one to do. Mm. Sorry. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow when we do the um, the rest of that. We'll finish that off, but it's a simple wiring thing. I'll take it off once it's done. I'll take this little unit off. In fact, it's nearly... Is it nearly done now? I think it is. Let's see. Really, I, it was just, it was good to make it up at this point so that we got it in shape. So now I can take it off and we'll, we'll do the next stage, which will be a bit where we have to cut the p p p pick card. P p p p p p p p pick card. Oh, would you please come off? Would you please come off? There you go. So there's the the bits together. Um, Shove that on there for now. And there, and there. Oh, sorry, the phone's in the way. Oh, gold. Won't be doing this for long, so I hope it doesn't go bleep. So there's the there's the sort of components. Nice little bit of braided wire there between the two, that can stay there. And then tomorrow's job is going to be mostly cutting that out, getting the pick up through, and then just double checking the holes before drilling them. What I don't have is a countersink, which I'm really annoyed at because I've lost it. Somewhere down in the back of here is my countersink, and it's the only thing I've got for countersinking holes, which I'm going to need. Um, so I'm going to have to buy one on blasted Amazon or something quick delivery. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Why the little start button is broken again. Uh -huh. Damn, I'm going to have to take apart this thing. Anyway, I have drilled holes and I'm dremelling. than drilling all the way.
have uh, the hole. As you can see, it's not a pretty sight to begin with. So, there's a couple of things then to think about. We can either uh, do a bit of dremeling or we can um, file it all. So, to file it all, what I tend to do is put a bit of tape in the jaws of Los Vice sauce. Like that. Temporary arrangement. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn it round, place it in, and use a file because I find that I get a flatter edge, a flatter line using the file than if I, <coughs> excuse me, if I were to try and hmm, dremel it, you end up getting a curved edge. So this is not a bad approach, and you can see where you are most of the way. Obviously the corners are going to be a little different. So I'm just double checking where I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for this line, so I need to get that straight. The drawn line. The drawn line. filing plastic like that you've got to leave kind of room for the corner curves which we'll do with another device which is this one um, but we're just really interested in getting the flat lines first and the closer you can get to the getting in, the lower you can seat the pick guard in the uh, thingy device the easier it will be to file. So for now, to begin with, you're looking for a straight edge <clears throat> more than anything else. And you'll pretty much see that fairly quickly whether you've got a straight edge or not and obviously the pick pickup is not likely to fit through straight away so you've got some work to do to get it to work. Now this is a little bit harder because you don't have easy access so we might have to resort to the um, Dremel here for this. Hold it. the corners to begin with, just concentrate on the flat surfaces, get those broadly right. Actually, if you ever get bored and you've got time, you can really do a nice little 
degunging by using a blade tip all the way across your files. And that does an incredible job in giving them a new lease of life. Okay. Now we might still get a... Yeah, we can get that one, that's good. I don't want to clamp that too hard either. Very useful for cutting shapes of pick guards, but it's no good in this sort of zone. Um, now, there are alternatives here, and I'm not sure I've got any very, uh, I don't have any very small Dremel things, because there is a small Dremel bit, uh, a little sanding thing that can <coughs> work nicely in these corners. However, most of this seems I've lost most of my like mandrels, they call them. So I'm kind of left with a bit of a knackered up one, which would probably just about work if I <laughs> trim it. I'm trying to do it without chopping my own fingers off here. These, these little mandrel things break, rubberized ones break very quickly. So they almost never work again the way they were intended to. But you can sort of botch it um, enough to get it to hold together temporarily. Or to at least to do the job at hand. So this is not brilliant, but at least it's on. <coughs> so if I want to get into the corner of this. <coughs> Excuse me. I can anchor this down here. And if I want to, I can just get into the corner like that easily. That's about as good a corner as you're going to get anyway. Good. And that gives me, when I get that right, it gives me a sort of benchmark for how far I've got to go down to flatten out these lines. <coughs> now if I'm in the mood, I could do some of the bulk removing here. Very fine, quite easy to control.
sort of a bit of a botched um, Dremel thing, but <coughs> it does get you pretty much where you want to go. So we're now not far off having this fit. So a little bit more work. I mean, it's better to work down to it rather than overcut to begin with. That's my, all my, my plan, my theory. Get close, but not too close. And then I need to kind of just moderate the force that we're doing with this file. Say a quick hello to um, Selena and her family if they're watching. This is uh, Elliot spoke to me. My son spoke to me this morning from Denmark, saying that uh, Selena's family were asking what I did, and uh, he said, "Oh, well, here's what he does. Look at this YouTube thing." So, slow process and you have to be patient difficult to get a straight line with a file full stop um, you think you would be able to I and mean, it's one of the best tools to use you get nearer to a straight line but it actually is quite difficult okay now I've got a slight wiggle going on down here which I've got to cure that means leveling this out a little bit you can tell we just need to be able to go through and we'll be almost there so a little bit tight in the <coughs> top to bottom so we need to just 
widen that a little bit more. a little bit more. So these corners are actually a bit too, <coughs> bit too rounded for this pickup. Um, this pickup wants to be a little bit tighter on the corners, which we can probably do with part of this file. So let me just. This one, I just want to bring it down a little bit on that corner. through in that side so I'm going to want to widen this corner a bit more Line, we should almost 
Okay, there. Okay. So which one is the slightly narrower bit? It's still there, isn't it? Still on this edge. Can we do it at this edge? We could do it at this edge. Hmm. This doesn't get very good grip. just fit in. So, let's do a bit of cleaning up with this. Nice, nice uh, clean blade cut which is always a good finishing touch. Um, where are we going now? That's, uh, we're just getting caught in the corners at the moment. So I'm just trying to make that a little bit tighter in the corner. Mm. We're sort of restricted on how now tight those corners can be but we're almost there, as you can see. I'm just going to level this down a bit more. for the corners, but for those sharp little tight corners. I wonder if we can get that last little bit with this blade. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe not. there. The amazing thing about this is that it doesn't really get a chance to come up very high. Hmm. Uh, so that's a bit Well, first of all, that doesn't fit in there, so we got a problem <laughs> size-wise. That's something I forgot to check yesterday. Oh. Um, obviously, that's too high, so we can't have it surface mounted. We have to have it pit guard mounted, but we have such a small amount of... In fact, we've only got that much uh, space or thingy. So it's never going to actually sit anywhere but flush with this pick guard slightly flush off the north of the thing I just think yeah, it's going to be very well very, it's limited range of movement but as I say I can't really think of any <coughs> any other tidy way of mounting it which still involves a pick guard so this way it's going to have to be that's kind of final Yeah, odd, odd arrangement really. 
or a limiting arrangement, I should say, it's not that hard, but just a limited, a limited range of fixing options, really. Okay, let's see if I can get something to take care of. Let's do There's another one there. Take care of these corners. get much tighter radius on those corners than that. But as you can see we are just about through but we are pretty much we don't really need to do any more than that because that's your lot I'm afraid. It's not really going to require any or going to permit any up and down adjustment so we're just we are going to sit there right there on the board that's that's it unfortunately plus as I mentioned before, we're going to have to um, we're going to have to thingy. What are we going to have to do, Sam? We are going to have to see. This is really meant to be body mounted. Um, this is the, what these screws are for. Um, but I think if we're going to let's have a think about this, we're going to do it. Different, do we? Hmm. I mean, we don't really need anything else. <coughs> I think we need to have it. We need to have it. We ideally need to have it pick guard mounted in this case, but it's not going to work that way because that's designed to be body mounted, and then we've got a sticky up thing which we can't really use either. So, the only way it's going to work in this case. We could still have it body mounted, but we have to have it through the pit guard like this, which is fine. Which means whatever else happens, we have to get through here with the drill <coughs> to mark the uh, mark our pilot hole, which is a bit small. Never mind, you'll do. Sorry, right, showing it here. So it's a bit of a <coughs> an oddity. Because this is a body mounted pick up on a pick guard mounted situation. But what I'm going to do is this. They're pretty much spot on where I planned them, which is great. Now the only downside of this is currently I don't have a, uh, I really don't have a countersink, and these are also very close to this bit of the edge of this um, route cutout thing. So I think probably the best bet will be to have these body mounted once once we've sorted the route route out. <coughs> And these screws are as good as any. So if we go a little bit upwards in the screw size, a screw size, the drill size. <coughs> I think this one is currently a two millimeter. Yeah, it is. So let's go a bit higher. This is one of the stupidest cases I've ever seen. It's really hard to get these screws, uh, drill bits in and out. Although the nice quality of the Makita. Okay, so I need to just draw these a little bit bigger. Oh, 
with the idea being that that sits in there like that and then this should go through like that and actually we could probably get away without the countersink in this case which I have ordered and it will be here tomorrow but really what I needed it mostly for was to um, uh, if I was going to countersink these like a traditional pickup but I, I'm not going to do that because these aren't working like that <coughs> so I just get me a very fine drill bit for a second and then we'll see how this goes I think that will do just fine. <clears throat> um, then we'll mount to the body and that's going to be the maximum range of movement that you've got possible. Uh, if you have a pick guard, because this is designed not to use with a pick guard, so you don't really have a choice in this. Um, I think this is a, probably going to be a powerful enough humbucker to work as is, but as I say, with, with a pick guard in place you really don't have much of an option unless of course we we cut this out um, we could have done that actually we could cut cut these little shapes out as well <clears throat> which I originally drew um, if that's if that were to be the case it would come through the pit guard and sit Do you know what? this probably makes more sense thinking about it as I clearly am although we have to get these dead on um, so, uh, of course, the thing I need is right there, right. Let's see what this would be like. So the idea now <coughs> would be to just allow these to poke through. Um, and then this will be treated as a normal body mounted pickup that just sticks through here. So let's let's do that. See how this is developing as we just go. Let's see. How big is that? Is that anywhere near that radius? It is the same, which is convenient, but we'd have to be careful. Technically, we'd be better off with a smaller one to begin with. <coughs> that, that, that bigger one can round out, but it doesn't give us any margin for error. So let's do the same again. So this is a quick change. Um, the thing about mounting it to the body is we still retain some freedom of movement. I keep saying that phrase. First chunks, and then what we can do, you, it's getting hotter there. What we can do is then replace one which should be the exact size, and then finish with the exact size radius thing. <coughs> So we have it. So the 
just can that poke all the way through there. Very, <laughs> it's getting caught up now. Very nearly, very nearly indeed. So it's just not quite fitting through. That's on the mark, that's on target. Do a little bit more widening. <laughs> perfect so not quite as I intended but <clears throat> it'll do so we can do a tiny bit of adjusting tweaking which we'll do here Just clean that edge as possible There's a, there's a little curve there that's just holding things up. Very difficult to cut, but sometimes it's the only way. Got a bit more control over the radius of the corner that way. But it is handheld and not perfect. But despite all that, it can be better than trying to do it with a rotary thing. Um, into the corner there which is probably why it's struggling slightly okay not a very good file but possibly okay for just smoothing out those <coughs> little, little final blemishes now that's not actually going to move very easily, it's still quite tight, so we can make very small adjustments still. going to move through there. That's absolutely perfect. There we have it. -da. <coughs> so the hard bit done. So I think I need to now tidy up. We'll get ready to remove this cover, uh, the plastic cover, get everything tidied up and then we'll be ready to finish the wiring um, and get the base back together. Oh we need to drill pilot holes for the new bridge and stuff but that's nearly, nearly ready. So it does need a bit of a tidy up. Wiring is always good to have to hand because that's what we're about to do. But at least I know where it is. There go all my strings under the floor. I've got too many spare parts now. <coughs> I'm overstocked. My store cupboard, my new bits store cupboard is just, uh, flowing if over it. Which is a good thing. I really am not complaining. No. Things, 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 things. Don't need, don't need, don't need. Run out of space. Don't need, don't need, do need, don't need, do need. Drawers, don't need, do need, do need, do need. So pretty much everything else I believe and I do need. Space making more than anything. Uh, okay, so we have a we have a challenge still, uh, and it's called <coughs> the chisel challenge. I think really, and basically means. 
making a opening big enough for this pickup, which it currently isn't. So you can see here, I've got some work to do. So we will need to get, uh, which was the same pen, where's it gone? Okay. Right, my, if I can't find the right pen, I'll resort to putting some masking tape on it and we'll use a standard pen. So yeah, we're gonna need to extend this. Because it ain't big enough, it is geared, <coughs> it's geared for a humbucker, but when it doesn't appear to be deep enough. Sorry, there's not enough thickness there to safely use the humbucker fixing screws unless <coughs> I build up with a bit of, I think we're gonna have to put a bit of timber in here to bulk it out. But the first thing that's evidently not going to be happening is any kind of useful fit in this department. So I'm going to line up on the holes for a minute, as close as I can get, nearly-ish, and then we'll see what we've got to cut away. Now this is just the outline for the pickup, obviously, but so we're probably going to need I uh, can't really mark it on there because there's no means of doing so, but <clears throat> obviously we're going to need to widen this beyond. We don't want to. We, we don't want to be trying to slot that pickup up and down through wood, so we need we need to widen beyond that. But of course, because it's under there, we have a clear run, um, which I'll mark on here now, like this. So we we need this sort of space and that gives a roughly even line so space from there through to there on that part so our cutout is going to need to be down to there and it's going to need to be back up from here we don't want it to be airtight we want a bit of room okay on both ends so do the thing both sides, something like that, maybe not quite so much there, and then clear at the top corner here as well really, just so there's no grabbing. Okay, so now I can colour that in so we can see what we're working with. So you could make a template and route this out, you could, one could, <clears throat> but I think it's going to be easier to chisel it, really. Basically what we're just, all we're doing is we're making enough space <coughs> to put in this humbucker. When we have done it, then, like I say, I'm but the problem is, it, the, it's routed for a humbucker, but there, there just isn't enough thickness down here to accommodate any up and down movement of the screws, and that, that worries me. So I would, I would prefer, um, we either, I'm either going to fit, rather than drilling, I might even fit uh, some <laughs> threaded inserts there and use um, hex bolts to raise and lower the pickup because all of that's going to be within the footprint of the pickup itself. Now let's just one more check, just one more check here on the shape of things to come. I just want to make sure we know where the, the edges of the pick guard kind of run in this thing. Just give us an idea. Actually, let's, let's go, let's go a little bit more of the Paper. This is just um, a visual sort of precaution. I just I want to be confident about where things land. And having a bit of masking tape on here is a cheap and cheerful way to establish that. So as you can see, we can put them back on there, line it up as good as it will get. 
get. And we can just trace it all the way around here. So look, there's our, our kind of boundary lines. And we can see that any holes we cut now are well clear of those lines. Got it? Oh, sorry, are you looking there? Yeah, so we're, at, the, at most, we're, we've got no issues of structural strength. The only, and any cracking, so for example, if we start chiseling, chiseling, quizzling and chiseling, I think I just sharpened this one the other day. So if we start, if we start chiseling out here, for example, we will get some cracking, it's almost inevitable. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to all be hidden under the, um, under the what's it, under the pick guard anyway. So this is going to give me a straight edge along here. Um, yeah, I want the straight edge this way, don't I? Yeah. That will break, break the paint surface. But you can hear it cracks the lacquer, but um, and it will crack backwards from there as well. You won't get a clean line, unfortunately. But it will probably, it'll all certainly be under the cover of the pick guard. So yeah, we're going to have to definitely uh, innovate something in there to hold the, the anchors for the screws or the bolts because there isn't enough thickness. So I'm not really quite sure how this was ever geared up for use with the humbucker, to be honest. Okay, so there's a nice sharp chisel to start this process, which is good. And just using a broad blade as well, because that gives me the straightest possible set of lines to work to. Again, this could be technically as ragged as you like because it's hidden by the pit guard. So don't, if you're doing this kind of thing, don't be too precious or too worried. <coughs> if we want to, we can take all of this off and see what we're doing. You see? So you get a lot, of, you get a lot of chipping at that point. Um, you could possibly avoid most of that with a route, but again, it's not, it's no guarantee. <coughs> completely stuck to my hand and missed <clears throat> yeah so you can see where we're what we're aiming for um, just to cut away from there now nice flakes coming off just to confirm what we're doing Yep, there's no mistake. We are hacking the living daylights out of this thing. In order to make it better. Da -da -da -da. doing here at this point is just breaking the seal if you like and we'll know pretty soon what we're left with in terms of cracked and knackered finish. There you go. Just so that in case you're in any in any, in any doubt of what we're doing. And if, if when you're doing things like this, you freak out, then just go like that and remind yourself that everything's going to be fine. Okay, because that's going to fit in perfectly and you ain't going to see this. Although we can tidy up the edges when it comes to continuing down with the chisel. But we just sort of needed to break away and get going. The only downside of these big broad chisels is they don't obviously cut quite as deep, deep per blow as 
does a, a finer chisel, but they will get there, especially when they follow the grain, um, like it's doing in this direction. Actually, I'm kind of off the I'm off the line there, but never mind. Kind of makes a straighter edge when you follow the we're going across the grain. It's just a matter of chipping away. And you'll get there eventually. Um, and I, I will, to, con to continue this, I will sharpen up a uh, another chisel and I'll switch to that. So we'll have a, a, a more smaller but sharper thing. Now you can see that we can basically follow the line and chip away. Um, but like I say, it'll take a while and uh, we've just got to keep going at it. Um, uh, funnily enough, I'm kind of not really too keen just now to take the neck off because I quite like the fact that it's not been disturbed. I'm a bit. I quite like what Joe Bonamassa says about not um, not taking the necks off for any particular reason. He just can't be bothered. You know, he. Uh, I go get it. He he just picks them up and plays them. He doesn't want to know what's under under the neck. Doesn't matter to him. But um, so I'm kind of a, a bit like this. So this is the kind of chisel you really need to get this job done. It'll take lots of little bites out of it like this one at a time. Going across the grain like this does tend to sort of compress as well as cut um, so it's you end up with a, a sort of sharp, uh, no, a, a clean edge but it's, uh, it's sort of shiny because you've, you've compressed as well as cut. Um, and then if you're in the mood you can sort of help it by pulling off little bits. And then go back and cut some more. So it's a question of whether you want to go through the hassle of arranging the um, your router or you're going to do it by hand. I quite like hitting chisels personally. Um, to be fair, you would almost certainly get chip out with the router on the, on the finish anyway. So you, the top part would always suffer damage. Um, there's no way around that really. Important thing, if you can try to remember, is to keep your original line going. So don't ever go down so below it, so you don't, so you lose track of where it was. Because the original line is your mark of straightness, really. So it's good to be able to find it again, regardless of what you're taking out. See my original line. As you can see, we're going evidently across the grain there. Um, and the most most to remove is here. We could have speeded this up with a bit of drilling, but sped this up, speeded this up with a bit of drilling. Um, I'm going to go back to my. I think I missed my line here, so. I'm going to go back to my line. Uh, yeah, you could do some drilling if you had a, you know, if you wanted to put it in the press or have a steady hand with a hand drill. But it's entirely. 
entirely up to whatever the mood is you're in. And it's just a matter of keeping on going in a straight line. And eventually, even if, you, even if you just cut down like this, it'll all come off. Now, it's um, not the strongest wood, so I want to be a little gentle. I don't want to whack it too hard, because when we get down here, I mean, I'm not going to go below this mark, but when we get down to this level, that, that final bottom line is a little bit thin, which is why I'm sort of nervous about standard fixings, so I'm going to have to come up with something else and a bit of a bit of a sort of filler of wood to provide a footing. Um, obviously, in a way, it wasn't an issue for this guitar as designed, but then it wasn't designed. It was fitted with a, a single coil, but it, but it clearly is routed with a view to some sort of humbucker. Oh, there you are. I'm going to just go off camera now because this will just be boring. I will come back when this is a nice trench and when this sits upon it nicely with the, the humbucker sitting gloriously inside it, poking out, looking for all the world like it was meant that way. I'll do it with the thing because it's broken the thing. Sorry. Uh, hold on. I've got to use a poker thing to stop it from running. Stop the running. And I've poked the thing with the thing. There you go, look. Excuse me. We are there, we are done. The hole is dug. The hole is dug. Da -da! The hole is dug. Hello, Doug. Um, yeah, there we are. So I'm going to paint that with some mm, shiny, no, black stuff. But before I do that, I'm going to find a couple of, cut a couple of little blocks to sit in there, glue in there that I can. Uh, I don't know how, I'll have to measure. Um, I just want to put a couple of blocks that I can I can put the uh, mounting screws in um, I wanna, first of all I want to check where they are so I have to do a bit of poking with a poking thing anyway um, I suppose I can leave that one and try that out so a way of finding out is to chop that back in there again for a minute put that down there for a minute so there we have it Ooh, conveniently just hangs there so the question I've got is where's this <laughs> Okay, that's where it is. Not a very accurate way of doing this, but it's probably not very accurate at all. Fortunately, I don't think I've got anything narrower. Uh, could I use one of the original screws? I probably could. Let's try that instead. This is the best gauge of where it should be positioned, having it in the whatchamacallit, pick guard itself. Um, let's see if we can reach through with screws, of which it supplies three, thankfully. I thought it was going to be only two for a minute. Okay, so that's good. They sit there, but at this rate, they don't think they're even touching. Not down that first hole. So I think what we're kind of looking at here is Two different things going on. Here it's landing on the shelf. For example. And here this will also land on the shelf. And this one is kind of out of the way altogether. I might just get a mark. I think I have. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's quite a long way off. <sighs> um, I'm going to do a couple of red or a couple of marks of some colour. Um, I haven't got much in the way of interesting colours. <sighs> so one is there, which I can't see at all. Let's make a make a mark. And then that, these two are here. And here, right on the edge. <sighs> okay, so not. Yeah, they're to the outside of a standard humbucker 
Right, so this humbucker route shape thing in here is pretty useless actually. All when all said and done. So we are going to have to put some sort of solid thing in here. And actually, the problem I've got is if I try and fit it in there, it's just going to be an odd shape. I'm going to have to cut some pieces, but I don't want to have to. F I don't. I don't want to leave this because if I screw into it, that's going to break. So I'd be better off carving this back and fitting a couple of pieces into there to provide the footing for this. Um, just looking at this, it's kind of hard to see how come that sits there. I'm not entirely trusting that first one. I'll show you what I mean by that. So this one shows up as being where somewhere like that, and that one shows up as being I can't tell. Not very good way of doing it. They just they don't look the same. Um, oh, they do. They are the same amount off the edge. It's just hard to see. I couldn't really do it without drawing. I'm putting masking tape all over here again. I mean, that's pretty much where they are. And actually, we don't really mind where they are just now. That was only a guide hole. So uh, technically, I do need to fill this. Um, because that's what's going to go right on the edge of this piece of timber and it's going to break off whatever I do. So uh, I suppose, as much as I don't really want to do this, I'd be better off either squaring this off and filling it, but I want it to go into fresh wood. It doesn't really matter exactly how it looks, so I'll give you an example. If I had some spare timber, uh, what is this? This is oak. For example, uh, is this oak? Yes, I'm taking some oak dowel. Um, this isn't the best stuff, but I just need to get a piece in there and then a piece in there. Um, better to go in to the top of the grain rather than the end. So, if I were to cut this out, it would be, for example, kind of that shaped. And then we could do a piece similar to that on the other side. And we really only need half thickness. So I'm going to use my saw in a minute. And let's just do a couple of quick bits to have a look. Uh, right, press the off button. Oh lordy. Whew, here I am, just um, making up some resin to stick in these blocks that are going to ultimately hold the threaded inserts. So I'm going to use quite a lot of goop here because I want them to stick well and to float a bit. So that can stay there. You can break and stay there. And you can go in there. Hopefully this will be actually what I should have done. I should have just stuck stucked it on the back side of the piece that I was going to stick in. Not just the back side, but also the edge side. Which bits am I going to stick in? All of them. Mm -hmm. hmm. There's going to be no way of doing this without getting gunge somewhat everywhere. Mm -hmm. Actually, you may need to borrow a bit from here. Uh, hmm. that's, that's right, I've already got it all over my fingers. Brilliant. Right, let's plonk this in the hole. Great. Lovely. Wipe off the stuff we don't want sitting on the edge there. of stick. Get that out of the way for a minute. Okay, and then we go for a bit on the edge of here, a bit on the edge of here. This mean no that's not gonna touch is it? Oh. Let's pull that bit out. 
on there. Put more on there. There we go. Let's get Stick that in. Yeah, lovely. Stick that in there. Lovely. Don't worry about the extra spare stuff rolling over the edges. It just wants to sit in place. Sit in place. Pull that excess off. set basically then once that's in place I'm going to obviously fit that back in see how that seats just have a quick check that we're not too high up we shouldn't be thank you and now we're Okay, so we can we can sit quite nice and high out of there. This is touching the edge, so that's good. Okay, plenty of space. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's going to just sit there, and I'm not even going to clamp it. I'm just going to let it set in its own place. One of them's thinner than the other, but that's not the end of the world. sticks all over the place. That's making a quite a nice joint. <laughs> It'll stay put. And once this is set, I'm going to... Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to paint, conductive paint, put back all over it. Now I could put some clamps in here or something. I'm not sure how easily they'll fit in. Let's have a quick look. Clamps, where do you live? Clamps. check the other side, make sure it's pressing on the paper, which is what we need. So I am going to clamp them, look at that. Pressing on the paper, nice, nice, nice. Get this next section on the back here. Positioning. Are we on the paper? There we are, but we've missed some of it, but it's enough. Okay, so that is fine. And we'll just leave it harden up there. Spread out a bit of this excess stuff, which isn't 
really going to go anywhere. Thank you. Come on. Okay, we're done for now. See you later. I'll um, I'll paint that and drill the replacement holes so we're ready to put it all together again before I see you again. Bye. Oh, this thing, this thing is not doing what it's told. It's conked out. I'm trying to make it work. Sorry about this old tech. Um, so I don't even trust that it's going to be running. So I've screwed the first one in. <laughs> This next time, one, I, oh Christ, I forgot I put glue in there and I took off and had a cup of tea. Quick, get them in. So this time, I wanted to try and do some clever filming. Oops, a daisy. I know I've got no SIM card, I just need to use the built-in memory. Heck, you've made it really hard by forgetting that you put glue in there, you great plonker. <laughs> English expression meaning something that we better not mention. So the idea of this was to go, hey, look at my close-up piece of thing. Ready? Ooh. Go away. No. <laughs> so no Apple identification. I no. Holy crap. How many times does it think I want to know? That's a photo. I don't want to take a photo. Sorry about this. Production business. So there we are, look. Oh, look. He is... He's definitely currently filming, isn't he? Yeah, look. Woohoo. There we are. We're trying to screw in this thing. But now, of course, this won't stay where I want it. So that's a total waste of time. <laughs> oh, my lords. So that's pretty much pointless with its zoom unless I've got a free hand which stop in this case I absolutely don't so I'm just going to get on and do this before it all becomes impossible to do get this stupid camera away from me okay so I should have said brilliant for doing close-ups when you've got a free hand now having chucked some glue in here. I think I've just basically made this harder on myself. <laughs> this isn't the best of all devices to screw something with. I'm going to try and go to a screwdriver quicker on this one. Sort of halfway in. Now when you have less control over the verticality of it, that's the bottom line. But we're trying Keep it straight. <sighs> Followed by some downward force to get it to take. And once we get it in, we should get to a place where it just skims the top of the hole a bit. really all it is but we'll need a spring behind there a spring underneath there too um, are we still running I don't trust anything anymore yeah we'll need a spring to or three springs to um, bounce the pickup off the surface I don't know how much there's going to be hanging over I mean how, how big a gap there's going to be we might even find that some foam is what we need just to keep the pickup in place. And this one's wobbling a bit about all over the place. It's not the cleanest things to do because it's getting my fingers caught up in the shielding material. But I have to say, for all its extra effort, this has turned out to be one of the best methods I've come across of fitting pickups um, because it's just it's just so much better than using a pointed self-tapping screw that basically you're hanging or you're dangling through the guitar 
um, through the pickup and sticking randomly into the wood wherever it happens to land and you don't have any real control about it and it seems like each time you do it it goes into a different place usually um, ends up with a bit of a ragged mess in the floor of your pickup route <laughs> route root routing routing whatever the word I never remember okay so now these are stuck together but that's fine you can go over there since you're useless there's our three doofers now of course therefore as a result we now need three springs of some kind um, and we didn't get any so uh, I don't think we got any with this pickup so I think that means it's expecting to have foam but actually we can we can just work with springs instead of foam since we've got a ton of leftover springs here of different kinds I prefer these smaller ones but we may not we may, we may not be have to be able to be too choosy uh, this time around because I don't have a lot of the stacked uh, sort of pyramid shaped ones I've got mostly straight ones left and these are all slightly different sizes too so that looks about right so okay and I do need to get this bit off now because <laughs> because I just do Okay, a small pair of grippy things. The only downside you'd sometimes get these stuck when they tighten up into each other. Once you can free them out here, okay. And this one's actually stuck on the end, so we might need to help it a little bit. Feeling this is slightly cutting the thread a little bit, so we've got some sort of burr on the end of that by the feel of it but, and we'll see if we have uh, so it looks okay maybe it's just got some glue in there from earlier on this one's struggling to come off as well so this is a very tiny little screwdriver it's very useful but it doesn't give you a lot of grip so you have to be sort of patient. It would be nice if it was a big, thick handle. But then the torque might be too great, who knows. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is just to save me having to go back in that box and finding another one of these. It does feel like the end of this is just ever so slightly burred. So dragging it through these three uh, thingies inserts should have helped it on its way a bit by recutting off or cutting softening off that burr if it won't bite on the these things down here which occasionally happens then what I'll do is um, what will I do what I'll do is I will if it doesn't bite on there I will put some grease in it that's what I'll do. So this bizarrely is going to sit on the mounted to the body of the guitar without the pick guard being in place, which is odd because um, hmm, I've got a question. We can either wire it up in place and then put it all in, or we can put it in first and then wire it up separate. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think which is going to work. Right now, I don't know the answer. I've got a feeling I would rather put it in place and then connect it to the wiring of the pick guard when the time is right, since there's a lot of cable spare. 
No, didn't find it feel good. Kind of like something tore. Okay, so let's let's get. Now these are too long for starters, so let's trim these. I'm going to shoot some bits of spring everywhere. One. Missed completely. Two. Three. Now, of course, the classic thing is you can't get them to stay in place unless they're slightly magnetized, which they think by sheer miraculous something these are. Yep, let's pull that right off over the side. And again, oh, come on, man. Just stay on. You're magnetic, but you're not that magnetic. Okay, so I'm just plonking those down on there. And I'm going to try and get the first one to bite. <laughs> that's funny. In, yeah, one. That's one in. There's not a lot of room to move in these, so this is a difficult ask. That one's in. Sometimes you would struggle to get all three. And that's lost its spring, hasn't it? Damn it. <laughs> that's gone underneath. So that's made it impossible to do. Oh, lordy. Oh, that's good, that one's in. And this one's in. Now the only thing I can think that's going to solve this, it's a bit of an odd thing to do, is I'm going to have to out-magnetize the magnet there by putting a little square. Still, that didn't want to stay. Putting a little square on top of a square magnet on top of the this thingy here, whatever it's called. God. Ah, this really is tricky. Come on, there you go. One in the hole. One, maybe? No. One. Yep. Yeah. Two. Possibly. Three. Now I have to move this. Which means that's at risk of running off somewhere. Trying to go in, but it isn't doing it. There you go, come on. So this is how tricky it is. It's not, not making contact. Biting, but again it's slightly at an angle so it all feels a bit stiff and this third one isn't doing so this is a, this is the difficulty of using a fixed insert approach um, because you have to be so spot on the on the mark for it to go in um, and, this, and this is this is You know, by the time you've got three different things trying to line up, it gets really difficult. Now, one of the reasons, one way it becomes more difficult is if you don't drill out the holes in the pickup, which I didn't. So, so we can make the life a little bit easier on ourselves is to take these out and drill out. They're very tight at the moment, so there's absolutely no leeway. And they basically go in whatever direction they're sort of forced to. But if we widen them with an over drill, then we'll get a lot more a lot more wiggle room, which is probably a good thing to do. So we should get a drill bit of the appropriate size. And I think we'll go for a three on this. Actually, that's probably too small. 
and in a way the more room we have the better so long as it still can grip on the top um, so since we have a dome shaped uh, bolt a three and a half would be good there you go So this just gives you more wiggle room as the screws and the bolts go through. And it's the same same principle occurs when I'm doing uh, threaded inserts for the neck um, neck pickup. No, for the necks um, when I have bolts on the necks, they very difficult. If you make it the exact same diameter as the um, the, the gauge of the bolt, then you, you you over tight as you're going through, and the bolt has no dangle wiggle room, and it means you're just kind of forced into a in, into one position, and you haven't got any you know, can't adjust or get the thing to meet. So like this, for example, now we have a bit more stretch and give. This thing can now, with a bit of luck, locate itself in the thingy, that thing. And likewise for these two, a bit more room. My god, flinging that at myself. But again, even with three, it's very difficult to get them to take and do what they're supposed to do. That one's on, I think. But of course, you're in the dark, so you can't see a darn thing anyway. So that's the other problem. There's absolutely no zero visibility. So there's no way of knowing if this is even vaguely lined up on the reset receiver. It's just infuriating. But I chose to do it this way. Get under there, spring. Why is it not? Why is the spring not going down? is distorting it. Right, that one's in. That one's in. Okay. Now I've only got this one to worry about. That's probably the best way to do it. There's absolutely no <laughs> control. There you go. And then you have to make your adjustments bit by bit. There we go. So it's a it's a, a faff, but it, it does get you there. Now the question is, that's okay. It's not very far out. So these are quite short screws. Meet, meets fairly... Um, short screws meets fairly small springs and that gets us to about there which actually is pretty low um, so we might have to, we need what we need is actually longer hex bolts which I'm not sure I even have so the idea is I'm going to have to stand this further out and the alternative is we can raise up the blocks even further but that's a load of Harassle, harassle. Um, these might be, I don't know if these are the correct size. No, too big. Okay. Well, well here's some. Are these longer? I think they might be. They are longer. 
Would you believe it? Different colour, but so let's take one of these out. Put this in. Now the problem with that is we need to go back to larger screws again. Well, at least we've got the, uh, the right things we can use. Things being the other word for things being bolts. Three of those. They're a sort of. Actually, they're all different strengths, really. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Three of these. Sure, that will do. Right. So basically, we start again. But the principle is there. How are you doing? You still recording? Unfortunately for you, we are. We'll do the same thing. This time we're going to use. Uh, we're going to be using Phillips screw. Get rid of these. Get rid of those. But the same principle applies. This is going to work through there longer. Uh, luckily, we have these spares. I've got plenty of odds and, odds and sods in this world of bits here, thankfully. Now this is going to be tricky because these things are even even longer than before, so even more likely to ping off. Now, the problem is we, we don't need all of this extra compression because we're only going to find it a struggle if we do, so this time we can crop these strings, springs down to smaller, but still bigger than before. Okay. <laughs> well, now these, I think, are stainless steel, so I think we may have no chance at all holding these on with a magnet, sadly. So this really will be a case of down in one. <sighs> stay on, stay on, stay on, thank you. Stay on, thank you, thank you. Too long, we face the task of having to shorten them and shorten everything as well. Are they both in? I think they are. I think we'll be all right. Well, no, we may not be. They may be too long still. We'll see. Again, it's just trial and errors. Now, the good thing about the extra length of these is that it does give us a fair old opportunity to get them in much more easily. So the trick is we're going to have to see how far in this length can go and if they are too long then we're going to have to kill them off. So that's a fairly good sample. This one, this side's a bit lower to begin with anyway so we do have a bit more downward adjustment on that side but we're sort of, there we are, we're at the kind of limits there. Now if this is going to stand so tall or so high up that it's actually going to get in the way now this is now where the, the, the pit guard is actually pressing it down because it's just a little bit too snug. There we go. <laughs> okay, for example, let's have a look. Actually, you know, that's about right, but we have to bear in mind that we don't have any more downward movement with those. But I think, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to go with that as a workable. I mean, I'll take it down to the last tiny tightened up bits until we actually literally run out of downward adjustment. Which is probably a little bit more than you think, which is good. Okay. Alright. Um, 
and then we have to just be careful putting this on the first time because we've just got to get it to slip on without pressing the pickup down any further because we don't want it pushed in. And that's good, like that, like that, into place, blah blah blah. That looks beautiful. Hey, done. Right, let's put these here fellas back in the bag for another day. And we are now pretty much ready to do the wiringy bit on the other side. So what it means is once we've wired up this, most of this, we have to do a wiring up there and then fit it all in in one go to put it away. But that, I'm happy to say, is that for now. Just go get to the very final tweak. That's about it. Any more of that, and we'll probably pull out the threaded insert, which we don't want to do. Okay, lovely. Look at that golden sunshine. All right, stop you for a minute. Oh, let's go around the back and press the button. Sorry. Stop you for a minute. Okay, I'm recording. Uh, but I'm watching something or listening to something at the same time so I'm just doing this for the visuals okay so please ignore me I can't not listen to this particular thing at the moment anyway. you might get some phone interference so I apologize for that okay. Morris. Get down and there. Come on. Come on. Okay, we are done.
feel that just out, sticking down a little bit. Now, that's my only concern. This is this too tall. I uh, know it's because it's sitting on that grey wire. That's why. Come on. Okay. Now I just need to check that that works first. There's another layer. I know it's not usual for me to be doing stuff without talking to the camera, but in this case I'm listening to something quite important. 
on YouTube. I'll leave you wondering what it might be. <laughs> right. So these are standard gauge logical long scale. Ah. Hmm. Just uh, let me just get my head around this. Okay, it ain't going to be long scale. Long scale will work. It's just we'll lose a load of wire, and we won't have the uh, we won't have the, sh the thin lead in. But that's not. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't know if it is essential actually. I don't want to chop that off and find out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set it up with these on. Um,
Uh, well, that's solved that problem then, hasn't it? It's worn out, that string. Ugh. Well, we'll have to cut them and see. I've got no choice, really. I mean, can hold off and buy some short scale ones, but we shall see. Actually, what we can do, since that one's broken, let's do a little test, a quick test, uh, uh, just to put my mind at rest. There you go. Now, we have to get some short scale because that won't fit in. There you go. Uh, yeah, it will actually, just. That was all I needed to prove. It's barely fit in, but it will. Yeah, just about. Uh, not ideal, but it will work. So let's just use what we got. Cut these down. John Sweeney melting down. Good. Interesting. is a wider gauge. God damn it. Oh, oh no. I'm gonna have to split some of this off. Damn it. Sorry about the view. Ah, a sharp bit sticking up there, but price we got to pay, man.
broken bit in there. Okay, we can back up the pickup now. Sorry, I'm still listening. I hope it hasn't interfered with uh, the sounds on the video. But if it has, I will kill it off because I do need to listen to this. It's just one of those times I don't have a choice, I'm afraid. But I do want to carry on finishing this, of course. Come, thank you. It's a bit caught in the plastic, but it'll come up. Oh hell, it's longer than normal. <laughs>
feel the attack of the cure coming on. nearly done. Oh, yikes. That's all right, I only hit the tuner. Don't worry. It's actually playing quite nicely, as is, as is, as is. Um, but we can do a small amount of adjustment to down here. We'll see what we've got in terms of action height. Bom, 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 bom. Sounds great compared to what it was before. Here's there. I mean, it's very flat neck. I think if you were going to do a lot of... the hell out of it you might want a bit more curvature in the neck but yeah possibly a just a fraction it's absolutely dead flat at the moment 
probably would say this, there's not even a whiff of curve in it, relief, which I could, we would want. Um, so, let's see if we get a tiny bit of... Uh, relax and relax. Myself. I can't see anything. This is weird. Right. Let's go down a bit. Where is where, where? It's just, that's just the weirdest thing ever. Intonation test. So we got one, just 1.6, just over two. So we're just coming down a tiny fraction on here. Tiny fraction on here. A similarly tiny nugget on there. And I think we're okay for everything else. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
with the tuner. And no, no, how well these tuners work with bass strings, but let's hope they do. Uh, okay, chromatic, thank you. with that Oops, wrong button switch off there we go so the Bronco base reinvigorated with a new four saddle bridge some internal workings um, come on, sticky something thank you uh, and a new pickup fitted into it's not quite large enough cavity so a bit of extra work required in there but having done that that's now uh, fab and finished ready to head back to Adam and I'm sure he's going to enjoy this it's turned out really well for the you know for what it is a very basic was a very basic no pun intended bass which has now got a lot better tone than it had before um, and actually beyond that as, as you can see from how simple it is to well the fact that everything plays there are no no um, bad frets evident um, and it intonates very well and it was already pretty much intonated on that bridge to begin with so uh, everything's just lovely and it looks good and also in switching it out by the way you have the chance to stick that replacement bridge on without running into any issues any issues at all with uh, having to fill holes from the previous bridge which is kind of a bonus really because quite often when you do something like this you, you do have to take it on the chin that your replacement bridge will have some uh, you know some not remedial work exactly but some work that has to be done to um, fill in existing holes now the one thing that I know that I was hoping I could do on this would be to put there's a bit of grime from the work we've done but the one thing he was hoping was I could, another thing he was hoping was I could put on a, a Morris um, logo and I can do a, I can put a setup by Reloved Guitars on the back with the Morris on it rather than do the full sort of lacquer. There's not a lot, really a lot of room on the front for doing a full sort of um, decal followed by re, you know, thingying it or putting some poly over it, um, which would be a bit of a spray job. So we'll, we'll go with the setup logo on the back. Um, and there you go, there we have it, the Bronco base rejuvenated and we've got some parts to go back with it so that's it for now on this one hope you enjoyed it oh hang on i have to do funny things to turn the camera off not very straightforward things thanks for watching see you again soon i'm gonna have to look out for another camera